good evening. Hello, everyone. My clock says 6.02. I think we're going to give it a few minutes um, for any uh, people that's a few minutes late before we start. Okay. Let's see here. Can I share my screen, Maria? Yes. All right. Um, yeah, I guess I'll do it right now. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Right, I think we'll get started. Um, it, it says 6.04 on my clock, but I guess we'll get started there. Um, welcome, everyone. Today, we're doing a Zoom workshop on SB 1383, uh, Senate Bill 1383, and how it affects um, the city of Los Alamitos. I'm going to do some really quick introduction on the city end. My name is Ron Noda. I'm the Director of Development Services for the city of Los Alamitos. Uh, I have with me today Irving Montenegro Jr., who's the manager of development services for the city. Uh, we also have our department secretary, Maria, Veronica, and CISO. And of course, we have our city's consultant, Michael Ballier. Okay. So we have a PowerPoint presentation to go over some things in terms of Senate Bill 1383. Uh, I would ask for you to hold your questions to the very end. We have a question comment section at the very end. So please write down your questions or chat in the um, chat box your questions. At the very end, if you didn't chat your question in the chat box or comment, you can always, uh, Zoom has a feature where you could uh, raise your hand, all right? But again, we have probably like a, hopefully a 10 to 15 minute presentation. And again, if you can hold your questions at the end, okay? So again, we're here for Senate Bill 1383, okay? Let's see here, right? So Senate Bill 1383 really affects the organic waste in the state of California in Los Alamitos. So organic waste is the largest waste stream in California. You can see the graph there on your screen, but it accounts for more than 50% of the trash waste. California throws away more than 6 million tons of food waste every year. And it says there in 2018, uh, California disposed of approximately 24 million tons of organics in the, um, the landfills and all that, okay? So again, Organic waste is the largest waste stream. So why is California, the, uh, the state, uh, um, concerned about the organic waste? It's because that organic waste emits um, over at the landfill methane gas, which is a super pollutant. And it says that it's more powerful than CO2. And the super pollutant and methane gas contributes to climate change in California. And of course, climate change negatively impacts California. Uh, such as, you know, making rising sea levels, reduced snowpacks, wildfires, droughts, and heat waves. So that's the goal of Senate Bill 1383 is to reduce that um, on the state of California. So here's some key implementation dates of the Senate Bill 1383. So it was um, proposed in 2016 and adopted in uh, uh, 2016 of September, as you can see there on the graph. In January 2019, two years of informal rulemaking um, began. Fall of 2020, the regulations adopted with the um, deadline of the start date of January 1 of 2022. And so that's why right now we're currently in effect. Regulation has taken effect and state enforcement has begun. Um, now, we do have a little bit of period where it's education and outreach. And so, the, again, the goal here is in January 21, I mean, January 1st of 2024, 
regulation will now require local government or the city of Los Alamitos to really take enforcement and make sure that we are meeting um, the goals of Senate Bill 1383. And again, what are those goals here? It says here by January of 2025, 75% reduction in organic disposal and 20% increase in edible food recovery. Um, I want to see if Michael Ballier wants to add anything to um, this so far. Well, I think the, the big thing to add is that these regulations have a lot of specific requirements. So some of the programs that we had before are no longer available. Um, the state wants blue containers for recycling, uh, green or brown for organics, and then black or gray for trash. Uh, and you can combine the organics with trash in some instances when you have a specialized facility, which Los Alamitos is the only one that I'm aware of in Orange County that has that. So again, keep in mind, this is different than previous regulations where the state just set a goal and said, hey, get there however you want to. This sets specific steps as far as education, recycling edible food, having specific container types, specific program types. So it's very prescriptive. Thank you. So here are some of the responsibility that comes to um, the city of Los Alamitos. So I did put it here on the slide, city of Los Alamitos, but it's every municipal jurisdiction in the state of California, okay, that they have to abide by these rules. So as again, it's to provide organic collection services to all residents and businesses in the city. So we've already started that process. Uh, establish an edible food recovery program. The city is partnering with food finders to uh, establish an edible food recovery program. Conduct education and outreach to community. So we've done, we started this last year. We're continuing that tonight. And then we're gonna continue that into um, this entire year. Uh, procure recyclable and recovered organic product. So the city is right now going through a policy change where everything we purchase in terms of our paper product or our restroom product, they have to have a certain percentage that meets Senate Bill 1383 where it's recyclable, right? Um, secure access to recycling and edible food recovery capacity. And of course, the last one here, again, monitor compliance and conduct enforcement, um, which again, where the city is gonna undertake um, beginning in 2024. Anything else to add, Michael? Well, I would say um, as far as the procurement, the city also has to procure 0 0.08 tons of organic waste uh, recycled product. So mulch, uh, fuel, um, electricity, things that are derived from the recycled organics. The state's trying to close the loop with these new recycling programs. And again, the city is, is in the middle of it, having to do a, a big part. Okay. So I'm gonna kick this to go to Irving to kind of talk about specifically what goes in each bin. All right, so Irving. Thank you, Ron. So uh, as you can see in the uh, the charts that are listed there, this is also, by the way, uh, accessible on our city website. It has, uh, what we have used for uh, UWS to determine and help determine rather uh, what goes in each bin. And, and this is a perfect illustration of what goes in the residential bins, the single family residential homes. Uh, you're accustomed to having the solid waste bin, which is your general trash that goes into these bins. As Michael indicated, these are typically your gray bins or your black bins. The blue bins that indicate recyclables, um, in addition to this graphic, there's also a list of items that are commonly used in a household that can be uh, considered recyclable and should be considered recyclable. And it's important to mention that there's no liquids or food items that should go into the recyclable bins. Um, and then you have your green waste, again, that this is accustomed to being for any sort of clippings or plants, landscaping that may take place at your house. A lot of times people will uh, you know, tend to use like compost items um, in their kind of green gardens in the backyard. That's fine as long as it matches the graph here. Uh, it's important to mention that this is, as I'm, you know, indicated earlier for our single family household um, that's set up with these, this three cart system. And then for anything that is what's considered household hazardous waste, 
such as batteries, paint, um, oil, in some cases, sharp objects, that's going to be uh, handled separately. And it should not be disposed of in any of these bins that you have commonly, you know, take out each week for trash collection. Um, if there's anything that is what's you know, considered household hazardous waste that can be harmful, not just to the environment, but to, you know, just to the, the health care, the, the welfare of people, then that's something that you want to make sure that you contact UWS for proper disposal. Okay, very good. Moving on. So we've had questions in recent uh, weeks of uh, why did we stop using Republic Services? Why did we enter into a new franchise agreement with our new uh, vendor Universal Waste System? And the matter of fact is because uh, our 10 year contract with Republic Services expired as of December 31st, uh, 2021. So around mid um, uh, 2021, we went out what we call uh, sort of the process of the request for proposal RFP. And with that, we also um, came up with the review committee, right? And the review committee was made up of um, an elected official and residents of, of Los Alamitos along with uh, a city staff person. And of course our consultant, Michael here, um, kind of like, you know, led us through the whole process, right? So at the end of the day, we had study sessions with the, um, of course the review committee, and then we presented the council Council chose Universal Waste Systems on the recommendation of the review committee. So Universal Waste Systems is a family-owned, privately held company. Um, they operate in three different states, Southern California, Arizona, and New Mexico. And there's the contact information right there for them on there. Uh, you can see their times for their, um, their customer service, Monday through Friday and Saturdays. Um, and then again, during the transition, which has occurred you know, the last few weeks, uh, they were very committed to facilitating the best or smoothest transition as possible. So going into this, I want to uh, kind of let everyone know is typically a transition probably takes about three months or so, right, Michael? Right? Um, yeah, we had a very accelerated process and they uh, have come through very well. Correct. Uh, I think we try to slam three months into half that into six weeks. Right. And so we knew that some hiccups were going to come along because, again, we were dealing with a service and, and billing period and everything with Republic Services. And so we're coming into a totally different company. Um, but the thing that we want to say is the timeliness of us correcting any hiccups. So, again, please reach out to Universal Waste if you are getting a little bit of um, struggle try, or, or, or whatever please feel free to reach out to the city staff at the end of our presentation. We'll have phone numbers and then hopefully we can assist in expediating um, the timeline and correcting any issues that you have. Okay. So again, I'm going to kick it back to Irving. So as part of our contract with Universal Waste, here are some services to Los Alaminos that they will be providing. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, among the services that UWS provides, you know, you can see in the red oval at the bottom, it's household hazard wa hazardous waste. And they offer quarterly pickup that is uh, administered through an appointment process where you have to arrange uh, by contacting UWS. And the majority, if not all of these, um, can be communicated, uh, requested. We did, uh, during this transition, we did recommend that, um, that they focus solely on the transition of old Republic bins and then introducing the, uni, uh, the new UWS bins um, first. So that being the priority and then getting into the special request that has been negotiated in their contract and that they provide. Um, <clears throat> so if you feel compelled to contact them for any of these other items such as bulky item pickup, which they offer at two times per year, um, twice I should say per year, two times, uh, two items each time, so if you want to knock out two bulky items at one visit, and this is per uh, per residential property um, or commercial property, it's not per unit. So in, in other words, if you live in a multifamily, uh, you know, apartment setup, or if you have a business that has multiple tenants, it, it is considered um, that they provide this to each individual um, property. So make sure that you, um, you know, understand that if you're trying to request that service and that during the holidays uh, they provide three weeks 
of three consecutive weeks of curbside service. In most cases, um, you know, other uh, services may only provide two, but in this case, you have up to three weeks. And that they, more importantly, uh, under the uh, umbrella of good customer service is that they will attend uh, to your needs, you know, and that they will try to customize your needs based on the recommendation, based on what you're comfortable with, uh, what previously worked for you. <clears throat> and it could also be that they may recommend something that is actually better than what was previously done. We understand that, you know, in a 10 year contract or a 10 year process of being with Republic, you know, you, you would get accustomed to routine and, and therefore it, it's seamless. You don't have to even think about it. Uh, and, and perhaps in some cases they offered some services that work better for you. But now that we've entered this new agreement with UWS, uh, they may have other alternatives that actually work best, you know, and now having to adjust to the state mandate and having to adjust to what will be a lot more stricter guidelines and requirements as has been presented to you, there's going to be some complications to what has been the previous norm. And so therefore, they'll have recommendations that can meet both the requirements that are bestowed upon us, but also that can work for you. So these are just some uh, of the more common services that are provided that we felt that, you know, not only, and, and as Ron will get to in a little bit, but not only uh, contributed to the decision of wanting to go with UWS, but it really felt like this is a, a very, you know, um, good company that is going to be trying to do the right by you guys. So these are just among the services that are provided. Well, I apologize. I want some clarification. I'm going to add some clarification here. There is a um, mistype here. So the bulky item pickup. It is uh, you. Uh, uh, you are allowed two um, times per year, but each time you can, or you're allowed up to four items. All right. So again, uh, in the PowerPoint, it does say two per year, two items each. Uh, I want to provide clarification. There is a typo here. It's two times per year at four items each time. Okay. So now we want to talk. So what, what had happened here is we're going to split it into two things. We're going to talk about the single family residence. We call it SFR or in the, the commercial side, right? So single family residence, again, is your typical home. And you see the three bins out there. Typically, that's what you have in front of a house. Single family residence includes multifamily properties with four units or less. Okay. So again, um, in terms of single family residence, nothing is really changing. Uh, during the review committee process, we talked about, uh, and that's one of the reasons why we chose universal weights was about um, trying to ease this transition as best we can in regards to Senate Bill 1383, right? And so again, it changed, it, nothing changes. You're still gonna have your three bins. One is for trash, but then you can also put your organics in there. One, the blue one is for recycling. And then of course the green one is for waste. So nothing really changes there for the uh, for the residential bins, and that's why you have a very uh, good rate that they offer universal waste system for that. Because again, um, you have your three trash cans there. You're going to have your three different trucks come by on your pickup day. Nothing changes in terms of the single family residence. Okay. Uh, anything else to add, Michael? Yeah, I would just add that um, the green will stay for green waste. And then the food waste, you can keep putting that in the trash because they have a special processing facility that uses an Orex system to squeeze the liquid from the organics out. And so that's how they're recycling the organics. In every other city, you would have to throw your food waste into that green waste container. Um, and a lot of them don't allow you to use bags. So in addition to being convenient, people can still do what they're doing we're avoiding some odor issues, I think that other cities are gonna be hampered by. All right, so now we're gonna go into the commercial property. So commercial properties are the, again, commercial accounts, and they also is considered a multifamily account where, where there's five units or more. And so typically what you see with a commercial account, I have a picture of it right there, is the bigger bins, whether it's a, what we typically call a three yard bin, Sometimes they're called a four yard bin as well or a two yard bin, but you see something like that. Now, I want to also say that um, there are some commercial accounts that just have a regular residential bin as well. Again, those are the options that you have. But typically, 
Again, a commercial property will have a bin like that um, in, in, in the PowerPoint presentation, okay? So again, Senate Bill 1383 is having probably, you know, the biggest impact on commercial property because usually a commercial property will just have that one bin that's there for their trash. Now with Senate Bill 1383, they say that you have to have a bin for your organics and you have to have a bin for recycling, okay? So now we've had some calls in and say, you know what? I don't really... Um, I don't really have recyclable trash or I don't really have organic trash. So why do I need that? Again, Senate Bill 1383 is mandating that every commercial count has one for organic and have one recyclable. But again, because of our vendor universal waste, we're not going into a three cart system per se. We're going, we're staying with a two cart system. So the two cart system is where you can have your trash and your organics in one and then your recyclable in your second one, okay? So that's why you're gonna see an increase in cost there for the commercial sector, because again, you know, you just have more bins coming and then you have the um, organic part of that as well. So again, I wanna say commercial sectors are again, the, the businesses in town. Um, and you can see right here, uh, pictures of some of those. And again, multifamily property with five or more units, okay? Michael? Yeah, so I think the important thing here again is the convenience and lack of, of new odor creating containers. If you had to have a separate container for just your food waste, um, unless you wanted it picked up every day, that would be once a week is typical in most cities I work with. And a lot of haulers don't allow that material to be bagged. Again, you don't have to do anything different. It can go into your trash, it's processed at the facility. The clean, dry recyclables, your beverage containers, the cardboard, the paper. Cardboard and paper are actually targeted organics. If you remember that pie chart that Ron showed you, that was part of that 52% that's going in the landfill. You'll have a separate container for that. But again, when you compare low sales rates to the rest of Orange County, the rest of Orange County is gonna be paying for three containers. You're only paying for two and the rate for your um, organics and trash mixed together is comparable with a maybe 10th uh, least uh, expensive rate for just trash in the county. So you, you will probably have the lowest commercial rate when all said and done because of the ability to combine two containers in one. So this screen here I want to share with you guys is um, it was presented to city council during the evaluation of all the um, bidders that came in, in October 11th of 2021. These were the proposed rate. We as a city went out to RFP, as I mentioned earlier, we had seven companies come in to submit proposals for the services to hopefully get the contract for Los Alamitos, right? And again, um, this is a condensed route. There's, there's a lot more numbers, but again, universal waste system. And that's the reason, you know, there's several factors. We chose them again, Mike um, mentioned about the convenience of it, the Oric system talked about, and then they had the, a, a nice blend of rates. So typically in a city, you have the biggest accounts are single family home commercials. And of course, a residential roll-offs, the residential roll-offs are like the ones where I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike is, um, you're doing a renovation at your house and your contractor needs to get this big bin to throw away because you're renovating that, right? So again, as you can see here, a universal waste here, as a residential three-car system, they propose $12.95 for single family, right? Then we go into commercial gray. Again, if you're doing a three-yard bin one time a week, they propose here at $135 a month, right? The commercial blue, which is recycling. Again, a three-yard bin one time a week is 77.89. And again, the residential roll-off, you can see at the bottom, if you're, again, an example I use is if you're doing renovation at your house and you need a big bin, it's 537.50, okay? And I'm not gonna go every single one, but I just wanna point out that if we stayed with Republic Services, which is a few um, um, rows down, they propose a residential three-car system at 1998 per month, right? A commercial gray, three yard bin one time a week at 180.45. Then you got the recycle bin three yard at one week at 144.36. And again, if you did a residential roll off, they charge you at 595.85. Okay, so 
some of the calls that we've had or emails that we had was why I have a commercial property, I have commercial trash. Why did we, you know, I paid, you know, $80 uh, or $90 last year with Republic Services. Now I got a bill from um, Universal Waste for $135. Why did it go up? Well, it was always going to go up again due to some of the regulations or requirements of Senate Bill 1383. But if we stay with the Republic, as you can see right here, I mean, we're just using example is Republic offered a much higher rate than what we eventually chose with universal waste systems. Okay. Anything else to add, Irving or Michael? Yeah, just really quick. Two things on the universal uh, rate. There's also a 95 cent per year uh, per month charge for the HHW program. So the overall universal rate is 1390 including the HHW, um, just to clarify that. And then they have another rate that's not shown here, which is $162, and that's for the food waste mixed with the trash. So if you look over at Republic, that $180 rate, you would need to add that $76.65 gallon organics cart rate to that. So business would be paying $256 a month with Republic and almost $100 a month less with the Universal at 162 for that same required program. Thank you for the care. Like I said, there's many rates. Again, you know, you, you, the commercial rate can vary because you could have a four yard bin with three times a week pickup. You could have a three yard bin with five times a week pickup. Again, we're just here showing you that again, it was consistent along and we're just using this example of trying to condense that a little bit. Yes, there is a household hazardous waste um, charge in there, et cetera, et cetera. But again, uh, again, we chose um, the blend. Uh, I wanna add here and maybe Mike, uh, Michael can elaborate here, but you know, we look at the rates in Orange County and if we basically simply put three tiers of all the cities in Orange County and their rates, right? You have the, the top tier, which is the most expensive. You have a middle tier where it's a, you know middle of the line in terms of range, and then you have the lowest tier. Los Alamitos is in the lowest tier, right? So we have one of the lowest rates in all of Orange County. At the same time, our low that rate satisfy us to meet the goals and objectives of Senate Bill 1383. Okay. Anything else to add there, Michael? No, you got it. We, we would be the ninth lowest rate um, compared to last year's rates when we did the rate study and those cities hadn't factored in their SB 1383 costs yet. So again, you have the lowest residential rate by far, but you probably have one of the five lowest uh, commercial rates. And when you add in the fact that you can combine organics with trash, uh, I think when all said and done, you'll have the lowest of both. So some upcoming stuff, right? So right now, um, again, we've been doing the transition and not only universal waste, but the city has been fielding emails and calls. And so one of the things we, uh, we're we gonna say here is service schedule, right? So you have to understand that Republic had a service schedule and a service route predetermined. I understand that's been for 10 plus years, but with the new hauler coming in, they're changing their route. But what does that mean? I'll give you example here is um, we had a neighborhood that was on the outskirts of Los Alamitos, right? And so Republic ended their day with that neighborhood. So that means they were coming in around 3.30, 4 o'clock to pick up trash. So after 10 plus years, the residents of that neighborhood were used to that. So they'd be pulling out their trash bin at noon, you know, waiting for the trash to get picked up. But with universal waste and when they determined their route, because it was on the outskirts, they actually started that neighborhood. So they were coming in at 7 a.m., 7.30 a.m. to pick up the trash. And again, with the residents not bringing up the trash at noon, they called in saying, they missed my trash. And so we're sitting here saying, please, you know, trash day currently right now in Los Alamos, if you're a single family, you know, home is on Thursdays, please have your trash out the night before or at least before 6 a.m., okay? Upcoming, there will be a slight route change to a certain neighborhood. Again, this will not go into effect till probably a few weeks from now, from uh, mid-March or so. And then um, um, Universal Waste will do that outreach, but there's a small portion of Los Alamitos, again, the single family residents 
that will change from a Thursday day trash pickup to a Friday day trash pickup. They will do their outreach. What their outreach will include is they will actually tape after they dump your trash, your trash can shut and then put the notices on your trash can. So when you roll your trash can in, it'll have a map and information verbiage on there saying that your house is now going to be moved from Thursday to Friday. So please note that that's upcoming. Again, that's probably going to start in mid-March. Okay. The commercial sector, right? They're going to be launching or pushing out the recycling bin in around June, July. So again, please expect that. Once they push out that bin, please expect that you're going to be charged for that second bin. So your rates will go up because you're, you're getting that second recycling container. And again, we want to add here that we do universal waste system. We'll do an audit. So again, if you have a three, I'm just using an example. If you have a three yard trash bin, you don't necessarily need a three yard recycling bin. You, if you again, if you universal waste will come out to your place, talk to you, you might only need a 65 gallon, you know, recyclable container. Then you let's say you had a three day a week pickup, right? And they'll do an audit for you and they might determine that it's it's better in terms of a cost saving for you if you get a bigger bin at four yard and you only do one week, uh, one one day a week pickup. So again, universal waste system will go out there and audit. And even our consultant here, Michael Ballier, will go out there and assist as well as needed. And again, tonight is the first night of outreach material. We will continue having workshops and then um, expect in the mail probably about three or four weeks will you have a big packet that's in the mail that that every address in um, Los Alamitos will get. We'll talk about Senate Bill 1383. We'll talk about universal waste and the services that they provide, et cetera, et cetera. So again, we also will have it up on our city's website, okay? So again, this is, like I said, the first night of outreach for um, what we're gonna do. So again, that's our city's website, right? Cityoflosalamitos.org. We are the Development Services Department. That's our phone number. Again, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any comments or you have any questions or you need any assistance. Uh, we will be glad to help you. Um, and I'm gonna kick it off to Irving or uh, Michael for any last comments before we take questions or comments. Yeah, I'd just like to add uh, some of the uh, concerns that have been coming our way from residents have been about the customer service uh, you know, hotline or, or contact information through UWS. I just really want to encourage those that if they experience that to please let us know, because ultimately that's one of the uh, the bigger components to us having selected UWS was making sure that our customer service was not going to be impacted, um, things that we can control, right? Ultimately, the increase in, in rates that was inevitable for, you know, the commercial, um, you know, sector within the city, just due to all of the, uh, you know, guidelines that were going to be imposed, but ultimately our customer service should not be taking a hit. So if at any point you're feeling that's been hampered, please give us a call. And my name is Irving. I'm more than happy to step in and assist you and maybe trying to get you in contact with somebody in, you know, universal waste, or maybe even me assisting you with some of the questions you may have. Okay. I'm gonna stop sharing right here. And I'm gonna open up for any questions. Again, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand um, or type in the chat box and we'll, I think Maria will unclick you or unmute you or whatever. And then you can make a comment. I see one we have here from Miss Mary Denley. Okay. I just wanted to make, I, I want to first thank you for being here. This has been very helpful to me as I've been trying to understand what I need to do. If I'm understanding you correctly, I can still put my food waste in my bag with my trash and put that in my trash bin. If I, if I want to put some scraps into my green bin, is that okay? If I want to put things like fruit and vegetable scrapings, is that all right? Or is that better to go right into them? No, and unfortunately, there's not a, enough composting facilities at this time that will accept the green waste and food waste mix. The cities and haulers that have those programs, some of them are having to haul all the way out to the Central Valley. Um, so again, the organics needs to go in the trash. That's where it'll be processed. 
green waste is just green waste that's going to go to a facility that can't accept food um, it can only accept green waste okay so i just pretty much keep on doing what i've been doing mm -hmm. okay right. great thank you very much okay. mr underwood i see you have your hand up how you doing sir Mr. Ballier, am I pronouncing your last name right, sir? Yes, perfectly. Okay, thank you. Um, you mentioned the reason that Los Alamitos, and I think you said one of the, or perhaps the only city in Orange County that allows for this mixture of organics and, uh, and waste uh, mm -hmm. uh, in one can. And, uh, and, and that is because of a system called the Oryx system. Can you explain that a little bit further about what the technology is behind the Oryx system? Well, it's basically a teaming of technology. Energia is the company that um, developed the Oryx uh, machine, which is basically a, a giant press, if you will. So the, the, the waste and the organics go into this press and it squeezes out all of the liquids, which is about theoretically 80 80 percent of the organic waste stream uh, energia then has an anaerobic digester where that, those liquids are taken to extract the uh the methane gas uh, to create fuels and then they compost the material that's left over so it is a a much simpler system for the customer it's a little bit complicated on the back end uh, but their technology has been tested out. Uh, Cal Recycle and County of LA tested uh, the machinery out and it was recovering 54%, I believe, in the initial test. So it's, uh, it's a compliant system uh, and Universal has uh, invested a lot of money in uh, a facility in Washington Street in LA to provide that service for the residents and businesses of Los Alamitos. And why aren't other cities actually going to that system as well? Is, is, it, is it cost prohibitive in some way for others to do well, so? Or? It, it's costly to purchase the system. Um, some cities are looking at it. I know a couple of haulers that are looking at um, that system, particularly for the multifamily sector, where I think it's going to be very challenging in other cities to introduce a new food waste a recycling container at multifamily properties. Um, so it's under consideration. Um, there is one hauler CRNR that collects the food waste mixed with the green waste, uh, but their large anaerobic digester for that material is out in the Inland Empire in Paris. Uh, and so it's the, the closest thing, that's the other two cart residential system, but that's a mix of the green waste and the food waste. And it is costly. Their, their tipping fee at their facilities well over $100 per ton. And they were one of our bidders, uh, but they were significantly more expensive. And then I don't mean to be redundant. I think I, I, with the piggybacking off Ms. Denley, are we then, uh, I just want to be sure we can take our, our, our garbage bags our plastic bags straight from the our kitchen uh waste uh uh cans and and the whole bag with our organics can go into the gray yeah because again it'll go to a system that shreds the the material up and then presses it and it's that liquid weight that's the majority of the weight of the organics that's removed from it so it so doesn't again, matter if the bag itself that doesn't that matter the, it is 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 organic or not or, or biodegradable it's, yeah it's no and that's another common misconception with the compostable bags to my knowledge there's not a composting facility right now that actually composts those bags because while they do break down uh, they take longer to break down than the rest of the product and they're in the business of selling a finished soil product so um, again you don't have to use compostable bags um, whatever your normal kitchen bag is, that will be shredded and then pressed to remove the organic fraction. Okay, thank you.
Any questions? It's a funny thing when we talk about the Oryx system because um, I'm a movie guy. And if you watch Star Wars Episode Four, The New Hope, do you remember the scene where they were stuck in the big trash compactor <laughs> and they were trying to get out? Right. And so we say that's the Oryx system. We call the Oryx system Star Wars because, uh, you know, they were trying to tr trash compact that. <laughs> All right, any other questions or comments? Um, Maria, is there, I don't see a chat thing on my side. Can you check to see if there's anyone typing a chat thing or anything? There is no one else in the chat. Okay. All right, um, again, uh, please contact us. Um, oh, John, you have another question? I think you're on mute. Yeah, okay. Um, well, if no one else is going to take advantage of this, I just have one other question. A little bit of an anomaly from what I can see in the uh, city of Los Alamitos brochure, uh, uh, very professional uh, three-color brochure that with all the recycling, uh, the blue, the, the green, and the, and the gray. But maybe you can, uh, one of you gentlemen can solve this one, this uh uh, question I have, and it regards the styrofoam. The styrofoam that I see that is in, even in a picture that goes in the blue bin, apparently that, you know, the typically to go food uh, is in it. It mentions, um, it, it mentions styrofoam going at the, at the last page of that brochure, you know, this brochure that that's passed out to all of the residents um, on the last page is actually a list of what can go in the three bins, not completely inclusive, I'm sure, but it says styrofoam to go in the gray bin. But the picture, when I, the picture I see of styrofoam appears to present it as going into the blue bin. Can you solve that? Uh, conundrum yeah. for me so first of all let me see is you're talking about this brochure i don't know if you can see it right the recreation and community services brochure where we have the city news in uh yeah this one yeah. right here yeah so i did have the same graphic that we used in there on in my um powerpoint earlier i see what you're saying so in the mixed solid waste and organic there's kind of like a picture of a coffee cup like what you get from starbucks right i think it's more of a coffee cup and in the recyclable, there is a food container that's probably made out of styrofoam. Right. That's right? the one I'm looking at. Yeah. So I think, uh, again, clarification is that coffee cup is probably not made out of styrofoam. It's like um, like the paper styro the paper coffee cup that you get um, when you go out there and get, you know. Um, um, I don't know if um, Michael wants to add it, but uh, again, I don't think it's, a, I think the styrofoam goes in recyclable, but the coffee cup that's made out of um like paper product, it goes yeah, into the um. Typically, the, the right coffee now. cups with paper have a wax coating on them, which makes them more difficult to recycle. Yeah. And again, um, styrofoam periodically is recyclable, uh, often when the National Polystyrene Recycling Council will provide economic incentives to recycle it. Um, styrofoam is one of those products that they made too well. It's supposed to be extremely lightweight for shipping, but the problem with recycling is you have to transport a lot of that material to an end user and a transfer trailer filled with styrofoam is maybe going to have 300 pounds. <laughs> so yeah. it's typically not recyclable for that reason, even though this polystyrene itself is highly recyclable. Uh, the economics of it don't work. So that would be something for us to check with the universal waste. If they'll accept it, um, that's great. But again, polystyrene is, is difficult to recycle because of the lightweight and the transportation charges. So, so therefore, as it states on the last page, the, the FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions page. I see what you're that, saying. That list, uh, uh, that longer longest list under the gray, which has styrofoam listed on it styrofoam should go in the gray typically it does because of the difficulty in recycling it finding and, a market yeah. and not typically in the recyclable blue bin correct okay right. got it yes. no, i see that right now um faq yes it does have the 
It literally says styrofoam and packing peanuts in the gray. Correct. So, okay. yeah, the uh, I'd like to add too that the frequently asked questions is perhaps a little bit better reference than the graphic that we showed earlier because it's all inclusive. And I mean, I even for my own educational you know, advantage, I was able to identify that I was recycling things that I probably shouldn't have or vice versa at home. So I would recommend uh, definitely looking at that or ultimately consulting with the uh, universal waste systems um, to ensure that we're doing the right thing. Okay, anything else? Right. Again, I thank you if there's no more questions for joining us tonight. Uh, again, please reach out to the city our web or visit our website. We have all this, uh, the graphics and the FAQ questions and the list that we were referring to on the city's website, cityoflosalamillos.org. Again, please call us. Again, I'm going to verbally tell you that number is 562-431-3538. That is um, our development services department. And so a team member here can help you if you have any questions or comments. And so again, I thank you. Um, I don't know if it's still raining, but if it is, stay dry, right? It was kind of going crazy with the thunder before we came on. Um, and again, thank you again for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you.